Now, here comes the music. It's 8 o'clock. It's Tuesday. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the DJ Roundtable. Uh, I'm hopefully we'll have a few guys coming here tonight. <clears throat> I'm still having my cough, so I do apologize in advance. Um, I do have some uh, delicious uh, sugar-free root beer, uh, A&W. So hopefully uh, keep the cough down as much as possible. And <laughs> of course, as I'm talking, I'm coughing more, which is always great. So again, I appreciate you guys coming in here and tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we do this live on Tuesday nights on Twitch. That's twitch.tv. And then you can find it underneath uh, TBM Productions, T is in Tom, B is a boy, M is a Mary Productions with an S underscore buddy so again it's tbm productions underscore buddy um here and if you're watching on twitch you want to watch it the replay on youtube it is uh tbm productions dj1 on youtube so it gives you both uh pages and um of course we are uh here on tuesday night to talk about the all the fun DJ stuff, and uh, you know, it's uh, all about uh, you know, DJs <coughs> and about all the fun we have, and gear, equipment, and how to overcome uh, issues and problems. Um, one of the things that uh, last week, uh, that uh, Aaron from up north he touched on, uh, he was uh, talking about that he um saw at uh, the DJ show, DJ Expo out in Atlantic City, uh, was a artificial intelligent controller to do DMX lighting. And that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the other things also, um, DJ Mike James, which has been on the show plenty of times, uh, he released a video about uh, replacing the battery on a Rockville um, uh, rock wedge. Um, which is a nice little inexpensive light. And actually, I just bought another set of six lights yesterday. Uh, hopefully, they'll be here next day or so. I uh, have another wedding coming up this Saturday. I had two weddings last week, one Friday, one Saturday. And they were smaller weddings. One was 50 uh, people. The other one was uh, like 70 people. Um, not big dancers. But they enjoy themselves. They had fun. And then that's what it's about. Sometimes <coughs> you don't have a big dancing crowd. And when I put videos up on YouTube, I try to show people dancing, having fun. Uh, people were coming up to me and saying, hey, great music. Love the music. Love the music. But they just are not dancing crowds. I, I noticed since everything was shut down and came back and people were separated, I've seen more and more weddings People want a little chill effect. They want to be able to talk a little bit. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, which I've talked about, I touched on plenty of times before. Uh, these two weddings, um, I can't say uh, well enough for the Maui 5 Go uh, speakers. I used the Maui 5 Go's for both weddings. And those speakers, they put out a good amount of sound. And the 8-inch woofer on each one gives a nice little bass because um, it is a subwoofer. And it was give a little, it gives a nice little thump. It gives a nice thump. Now, is it a big thump at like an 18? No. Or even a 12, like the RCFs? No. But for the size of the crowd for both of them, it is more than enough. Uh, the one venue on Friday night, it is a... Uh, rectangle. I've been there plenty of times. It's up in uh, on the Channel Lakes. And it is where we're at. We're on one end of the rectangle and it goes along this way. And along that back wall there, they have mirrors going across the back wall. So when you have mirrors going across that back wall there, that's going to reflect sound back. It's glass. Glass reflects sound. Uh, so what we ran into with the RCFs, is that the bartender at the other end was having a lot of bounce back and they were having that loop around their area and they have some plexiglass up uh, for uh, health reasons. 
And uh, we went to the RCFs and uh, went from the RCFs down to the Maui Five Goes. And we've had, you know, people in there. The, the facility could hold up to 130 people easily. We've had 100 in there. Not a problem whatsoever. So if you're looking for different steps and different things, you know, uh, if you go down to a 10 inch uh, woofer and a driver, let's say you go to the uh, K10s.2s or you go to uh, the uh, PRX uh, 10s, uh, A10s versus the 812s uh, or 815s, or if you go to even EN's or if you go to another one, um, I'm not sure on EV, EV, I know EV has a bunch. Uh, you can go down the list of a manufacturer for speakers, go down to a 10 inch. If you want to do a traditional top and bottom, that might be the way to go. Have a nice little uh, base and then go down to a 10 inch. If you feel you need a little more base, and again, this is one of the things that's you don't want to blow people out. You get 50, 60 people, 70 people. You don't want them to feel like they're in a front row of a concert and being blown out by bass. So you want a nice clean sound, I definitely would recommend just staying with the tens. If you want a little more bass, let's say you have more than 70 people or 80 people, you want to have a little more bass, then they can see a small subwoofer with that. Uh, Brian has read a great video on doing a microsystem that he had two um, FBT speakers that have like a eight inch woofer and the same tweeter it's in their bigger speakers and a uh, I want to say a, I want to say a 15 inch EV sub and he could cover 100 people no problem with a micro system and I think that is something that people should look into having in their you know equipment having the right equipment for the event I think is very very crucial and people just sometimes just don't do that they just don't have it they, they don't have the right equipment they want to bring in you know four or five subwoofers they want to bring in all these tops and have a small wedding and sometimes i feel that's overburdened for what it is if you look at a lot of things and you're looking you have a small wedding maybe you should go down now again if you're outside it get all boils down to the room there's a lot of variables there so I'm not saying to fit all, end all, this is it, this is what you need to do. It all boils down to what you, as a professional and a sound engineer, because you have to put your sound engineer hat on and have to look at what you're doing, what you're trying to do. Uh, to me, the things I look at is clarity is number one. Make sure that you sound good. Again, I go back to clarity, but also make sure you sound good and make sure you're not overly powerful for the event. Um I have a wedding coming up that's going to be basically 200 people. I have a wedding this uh, Saturday, coming Saturday, that's going to be about 120, 130 people. Um, that right there tells me that um, that wedding right there for that room, I'm using my RCFs. They're, they're, we're doing more with that. And then, uh, well, there, here's someone coming in. Um, I'm doing more with that for that wedding, but we're still using the Maui 5 Goes for cocktail. We're going to use our uh, K array, uh, line array for the ceremony. So we're going to do a lot of our normal stuff, but I don't want to overburden people with sound and blow people out. That's the last thing I want to do. So we, I'm talking through and walking through with the couples. I'm asking a lot of questions of where we're at floor plans, how we're set up, where we're set up, what we're doing, how many people. These questions are all questions I ask. Well, sir, how are you doing today? How are you doing tonight? No, I'm good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As always, glad to have you here. Glad to have other people here too. So I don't seem like I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> um, so you said, you you messaged me, you said you have a topic for tonight. What, what topic do you want to touch? Ooh, I just got done with my podcast, really. <laughs> uh, well, what the topic I should have today? The topic really is, what is the plan for 2023? Well, what, is the plan? What, what was that? I was, saying, I was saying, what is the plans for 2023? 
plan for 2023 for me? For anybody, just a lit, lit in general. It is the same as 2022. <laughs> you know, trying to get gigs, try to make sure that we are booked. I have a lot of bookings already for 2023. Um, I'm turning some bookings down because they're asking for the same dates. I probably have in the past probably six weeks, probably have turned down uh, bidding on as well as turned down through emails directly from us. Uh, probably four or five weddings, or if not more than that, um, just because the fact that there's already dates that we already booked. And I don't know in your market, but here up here in Chicago, because of uh, a lot of DJs went out of business during uh, 2020 and a little bit of 2021, there is a very big demand. There's pent up demand, which is great. But there's not a lot of vendors to go around. And I have noticed that a lot of people are having a hard time finding quality vendors. And, you know, anyone, and, and that's not bad, anyone can start DJing, which is great. But you need to know what you're doing, especially with a wedding. A wedding is much more complicated than, let's say, a backyard party going to DJ for a couple hours. Or, <clears throat> as I, I, I've told the story before, uh, one venue I was at, DJ comes walking in just with a laptop, asking where he should plug in at, at a wedding venue. No audio, no sound system, no controller, just him and his laptop and saying, you know, walking in and basically going, uh, where do I plug in at? And there's a tablet, by the way, but it's I, for prop wise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and instead of them saying, uh, I need to have stuff. No, they're. They're used to going into a nightclub or whatever they go into and having stuff there versus when you own a mobile DJ service, you need to have everything and be prepared for everything as much as possible. You know, I, I've seen guys that go to a lot of venues who are not prepared, who don't have the right equipment, who don't have enough equipment, uh, even simple things like extension cords. You know, they'll go to Home Depot and buy those cheap white extension cords like you plug in Christmas lights, and they're trying to run speakers off of it. And that's... Uh, you need, a, like, a, a side... You need, like, a, a multiple... A, a multiple electric extension cord. Not the, It's not the socket thing. It is, it's, I think it's called a socket. Uh, multiple, like, on light. What having multiple ones on There's, it. There, you can get a, a multiple adapters. You can get... Um, Amazon actually is one of the best. Amazon have Amazon is my best friend. <laughs> yep, Amazon is my friend too, and they have black extension cords. I give twenty five and fifty foot black extension cords, twelve gauge extension cords, which is a heavy duty extension cord. Um, and then I put on the end, I put a three prong or actually a three way splitter on the end of that extension cord. So the extension cord itself, it's all heavy duty going right to that plug, and when I'm plugging in there, usually a speaker and a dance light. And then I have an open plug in case I need to plug like a computer or something like that. Not going to draw a lot of ampage. I don't ever want to overdraw a uh, a cable. So knowing how much power your stuff draws also is important too because there's plenty of pictures on the interwebs and you can go on there and look of DJs, bands, fill in the blank here, uh, they get the little white extension cords and they're catching on fire and are, they're burning, they're smoking because they're drawing so much ampage. That's why you need to know what you're plugging in, how many yeah, you're plugging it's in. It's like you need to have, you need to have like a meter, like a, like a meter that tells you about the socket and a things kilowatt. like that. Yeah. It, it's a kilowatt. That's If you go to Amazon, you'll search, you search for kilowatt. It will tell you, you can plug in. It, it, it looks like um, I have, I have two of them. You can plug into the wall and plug in your extension cord in there, and you can put in amps, and you don't want to exceed more than, I would say no more than about 10 amps for an extension cord. Uh, if you're at 15 amps, 15 amps is what the whole entire outlet can carry. So you plug, you just plug in one thing in that outlet, it's one circuit, one circuit breaker at 15 amps. You want to run it on one extension cord? I wouldn't. I would split it between two. But that's one of the things you want to look at is you want to get a kilowatt plug in there, see me amps you're drawing. If you're drawing 15, 18 watts on that one uh, line, 
you need to break that up. Another thing also, which is great to have if you're worrying about power, is battery powered, um, basically battery powered uh, uh, little generators. Um, Howie Darkstar has talked about before. He had the Howie box before, and he had a few other things. If you go on YouTube, you go look at Howie Darkstar and the stuff he's called. The, guy, the guy's a genius. I don't, I don't know if you ever watch Howie Darkstar on YouTube. Mm -mm. Um, I never heard it. I you, never heard you it. You heard of Disc Jockey News, right? Yeah. Okay. Howie Darkstar, he always has a show on there. The guy is an electrical genius. He does tons of stuff with batteries. He came up with uh, a few years ago, probably, I want to say 10 years ago, maybe a little more. Hey, what's up, Steve? Uh, he came up with the Howie Box. Awesome design. Uh, and he's, you know, he he has tons of uh, designs and stuff. And he, if you go to his web, uh, his YouTube channel, tons of great information. He's a great guy, awesome person. I can't see how great of a person he is. He, it's, 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 he's awesome. He's an awesome guy. And they talk about the stuff all the time. And it's one of the things you want to go and look at. He always has talk. He talks about the stuff. There was a little battery powered stuff, you know, the, to power things. That's another alternative you have. But if you're going to run extension cords. And you want to run plug into the wall, buy a kilowatt, plug it in, see how much amps you're pulling through that extension cord. You should never exceed. Not only what the outlet does, it's a, usually a 15 amp circuit, maybe a 20 amp circuit, but most places usually are a 15 amp circuit for an outlet. You don't want to exceed that volt, that ampage coming out of that uh, that one single uh, extension cord. Uh, you want to split it between two. Or, you know, again, you want, you want to go between different outlets. Go between different circuits, too, if you can. Never take one circuit because if something happens, something else goes on that, pops that circuit, you want to be able to have a backup. Um, if you can. Some venues, it, it's one circuit. They have one circuit for the uh, DJ, which is great. And they have this nice big plug for outlets. And they have 20 amps for the whole entire four plugs. Hey, great. I'm not going to draw 20 amps. But the thing is that I want to make sure I always don't overburden and overdraw extension cords because you don't want to wind up on the interwebs, on on uh, on uh, Google or anything, showing that you're DJing or you're playing a band and the extension cord coming out of the wall is glowing red hot and smoking and catching on fire. That is not fun. So no. But uh, getting ready for 2023, like I said before, my big things is just, you know, taking in customers, taking in what um, what I've had for 2022, making sure we're ready, we're prepared, um, that we are good to go um, physically as well as mentally, um, making sure that we have everything we need for 2023. Uh, as well as 2022. Uh, and like I said, before you came and joined me, <clears throat> I just purchased yesterday another set of Rockville Rock Wedges, uh, another six, 800 bucks, uh, plus, you know, tax, uh, mm -hmm. which I think was like 70 bucks or $71. And stuff like that is great to have coming in uh, to add. You know, now I have, uh, what, 12 plus I have 18 rock wedges and I have another 12 uh, Chavez. So I have a, a ton of light to put around a room if I need to. Um, but I want to, uh, with Chave, the cool thing is that you can do master slave um, with their wireless system and um, you don't need to have a separate controller for it. You can do it right through, turn one into a master and turn the rest of them into slaves through uh, their DMX system. So and there's tons of video on YouTube. Uh, DJ Mike James, he has a um, video up of it. Uh, make sure you go follow him and see what he's doing. Uh, DJ Fire uh, has talked about it and showed stuff about it. So another one you can show for it. And then, you know, again, um, uh, DJ Salsas, he's got all his stuff about DMX. And I, I literally just had to pull out of SR camp. Always have, always have stuff. Oh, I can start grabbing cables too. 
<laughs> How's it pulling out cable? I had cable um my bag right here. I had my case and stuff right here. I thought about missing. Yeah, I thought about missing this, tonight. This, but just, no. this just in front of me. Headphone uh, cables, uh, USB cables, uh, a cable to recharge. You know, power uh, flashlight, uh, USB uh, mini to USB standard. You know, USB A. A couple, uh, three headphone uh, cables here. Um, so I, I have just right in front. I have tons. Of, I have a little bit of cabling, uh, and then I, if I go a few feet over to, you can't see it, but over here to uh, my uh, my cabinet, I have even more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to pull a lot too much cables because it's gonna be a little hard to unravel and stuff like that. <laughs> So it's gonna be hard though. So what are you doing for 2023? More gigs and a lot of things coming. Um uh, gigs. Literally, it's a lot of gigs I've done. Is there like more gigs I can think of? But so now when 2022 ends and on Christmas, New Year's happened, I got a new year's party to do. Then my birthday is on January. And then it's a whole bunch of stuff in January. Oh, you're your January baby, huh? Yes. Isn't that uh that's Capricorn, am I correct? Capricorn. <laughs> yes. There you go. That it means you should be a really good hockey player then. <laughs> it, it's no seriously, if if you are born in like you know December, January, February, it's a tendency for those people born in those months. Because it's always cold. There, yeah, it's cold months. And it's always cold. They they tend to be looked, really good hockey players. I literally looked at that. I literally looked yesterday, and I was like, "All this rain happening is literally when it's gonna be cold." I'm literally saying it's already is is raining season now. It's really supposed to be summer, but now it's feel like fall and winter. So, uh yeah, but you're down you're down in Mississippi, so you don't really get fall and winter. Your fall and winter is like my fall like basically the beginning of fall. Yeah. You don't get like, you know, snow like we get up here in Chicago and the cold we get. Yeah, we don't get hard we don't get no snow. We don't. We just get little rain. We just get I'm gonna tell you the last the last snow day we had, we did have snow one good time. Well, it was last good snow we did have it in 2020. But that's when we had a good bunch of snow, and then it dried up the next day, and then it snowed again the next night, and then it dried up. It was back to back, and then 2000 and I'm taking I'm gonna have to take it all the way back. 2016 or 17, that's when we had a whole bunch of snow, and it stayed out the whole week, and then we. Live and go out a place in the snow all day and come back in cold and have ice like um hot cocoa and some ch a bowl of chili and something like that and live like that. I literally the best time I live I in the house on Christmas. I literally have my PJs on and just watch some good old Christmas movies and have some bowl of chili. It'd be good. Well, usually. The end of October, beginning of December, uh, end of October, beginning of November, I will go to the um, um, supply store. Uh, when we, uh, basically, it's like um, yard supplies uh, for like mulch and stuff like that and rock that uh, takes care of all the um, uh, all the gardeners and stuff like that. And I'll go and buy a pallet of uh, rock salt for salt and rock, the walkway and stuff like that. And we have uh, a media spreader that mm -hmm. we you know push up and down our driveway and our walkways and our uh, sidewalks here and make sure we get the snowblower ready. That's probably uh, beginning of October. I'll probably take that to the Honda dealer and we'll let them do a tune up on because I've had for two years and you know needs to be get checked out. Make sure he's 100 percent with it and. They'll clean it up and charge me, you know, whatever amount of money it is and get that all 100% ready to go. And, uh, yeah, um, I'll go through, like, you know, 50, 55 bags of uh, of salt, <laughs> salt and everything. And I'll have snow. Uh, uh, usually 
uh, end of January, February, like last year, snow. I had I had four feet of snow on the ground one time. So you know, yeah, but we did. We had like most of the. Usually in Mississippi, we usually have snow. Usually cover uh like you can see us see the uh grass a little bit, but now last last time we in Mississippi we had the whole grass was gone. You just see, literally see snow on top. That was it. I see snow for for weeks on end because it's so cold, and then uh, it's it's literally, Mississippi Mississippi is literally the cold. Like when you get in chance, you literally get close. He literally had to wear a big jacket. Literally, you well, I'm be, sure it'll be it would literally be cold. It'll literally be cold the whole month of October and November and December. It'll literally be cold. At Halloween, most is literally Halloween was the coldest one last year, and everybody was like, "Whoo! I wish it would be hot." And you really don't want to say that. You really don't want to say the age. You guys, get, you you guys get hot summers and cool winters. I won't say cold, but I will say cool winters. Ooh, hot. <laughs> you have the most humidity. I, I live Mississippi weather is the most craziest weather ever. Because <laughs> so, let's, let me ask you this: huh? Do you during like December, January, February, those three months? Mm-hmm. Do you get a lot of gigs, or do you get a gig here and there? Now I know you said New Year's. Uh, you probably you have a couple of Christmas parties, but yeah. in January and February, do you have a lot of gigs? January, you know, January a lot of people is Capricorn, so you know, bet back a lot of people have birthday parties and parties like that. So yeah, I have a lot of gigs on that. Then February come around, that's val- close to like Valentine's and stuff like that. So you know there's more. And uh March, yeah, Christmas, really December, really December. I lay I lay off, I lay uh, just lay off on like DJing and I just lay go spend time with the family. That's it. That's yeah, what I'm usually, talking about. you know, like this year we had a wedding in March uh 20. I'm looking at my schedule right now, 2023. I have another wedding in March. I have a wedding in April. I have what two weddings in May. I have multiple weddings in June and July already, and and September. Ooh. Nothing in August that right now, um, but uh, March, yeah, March and March around here could be rain. It could be cold and snowy. The end of March is usually pretty okay, but it beginning is, of yeah. March, I, we we've had snow at the beginning of March. You know, February. Uh, the beginning of February is cold, and usually, I, I usually don't try to take stuff uh, January, February, uh, and beginning part of March. The end of March, I feel much more confident than versus beginning of March, mm-hmm. and I don't want to have um, a lot of gigs in bad weather. And I know, like. Uh, Steve Slade. You got to deal, you got to deal with the traffic and you got to deal with only that, but also parking and trying to get through snow and not fun. I know Steve Slake, he uh <coughs> he's down in uh he's in Georgia, so he's a little further north than you are. And I know Georgia gets freezing rain. So I don't know if Steve gets a lot in January and February um for requests for gigs. But um I know when I I, I get requests for January, February I'm very hesitant uh, because I know this is a good uh, winter. This yeah, the weather can change in a heartbeat, and I don't want to promise someone and not be able to get there. I would, I would kind of say that the only off season we have for around here for non wedding, and people still have weddings, people still do it. But I would mm-hmm. say the off season would be uh, basically January, February, and then March kind of picks up at the end of March um, for. Uh, the wedding season and it's just goes on and on and on until December again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we basically have two months, 10 months out, two months, uh, 12 months that uh, do stuff. I know um, our DJs like out in California, uh, especially SoCal, they could do stuff in January and February and they're not worrying about snow unless they go up mountains and stuff like that. You know, if you go to LA, it's cool. It can rain a lot of venues, which, surprises me a lot of their venues are outdoor venues 
So everything is outdoors. The, the, the wedding, the ceremony, the reception, everything is outdoor, just open, open sky. And it's like, well, you guys in California get rain too. I, I, I just don't know. I, I, I'm always one of those people that, you know, when I see outdoor, you know, I want to have an outdoor wedding, like the wedding this uh, Saturday. It's an outdoor wedding. I've been watching the, the weather. I, I watched the weather today. Um, it rained. They're talking 82 degrees, which is not bad. You know, a little higher humidity. Okay, fine. Great. It's on a patio. Fine. They're talking no no rain. Um, but out to me, outdoor weddings, it's always day of because weather changes so quickly. It could be sunny in the morning and 75 degrees and beautiful. And all of a sudden in the afternoon when the rain it could start raining and overcast and you get in the 60s and I don't know about you, but I do not want to set up in rain because water and electrical does not work. You know, Ooh, you're gonna be shot. You're gonna be shot. Want, yeah, I do not want to get electrocuted or have someone electrocuted because of. Yeah, 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 if you get shot, your new name is Lich. Well, yeah, Lich. That, 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 is not good. that is not, that is not, that's not that. good. That's that not, not good because you literally shot by air. You shot by the laptop, the controller, the extension cord, the cables. Speakers, if your headphones, woo, you gonna be a shocking body. Your whole body just gonna be shocked. Well, what else I gotta do? Maybe well, yeah, see. it's 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 one of the things that um, when when I see stuff, you know, again, certain times a month uh, or certain months, I try to shy away from, and. I, again, people who want to be in uh, be an outdoor wedding, be it whatever time of year. Hey, it's beautiful. I, I love it. It's it's great for pictures. Uh, I have a lot of great pictures of outdoor. <coughs> but I also have a lot of horror stories, and I tell people I'm like, you need to be prepared not only just for weather, but also in the what if you know what can happen if uh, a wedding party. Um, Uh, what happens if someone in the wedding party is overheated or they get cold or whatever, you need to be prepared for that stuff. So uh, you're getting prepared for 2023. You're getting some, how many inquiries you have for 2023? Uh, I can't even name. So yeah, Wes, I'm literally looking in right now and I uh, see a lot of people that trying to get to me. And a lot of a lot of calls. Right tonight, it was a lot of people called during the podcast, and literally, I was like, "Ooh, I gotta hurry up on that." And then later, I had the rest of my podcast get on yours before I hit doing these papers. So literally, I had to spend time with y'all a little bit, and I got a boom crash finish. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, we won't. We won't go too long tonight, since just the two of us. Uh, we'll go on for another uh, ten minutes or so <laughs> that we can get back to. I, I get stuff done too. Um, I got, I got a bunch of stuff. Um, the unfortunate thing is that uh, we have. Uh, you know, I have. I have a business to run, and I, I, I need to answer. I, I, I just saw just now. My my computer just popped on the screen over here. I got a couple emails that came in on my. Uh, okay. on my business email so I have to answer those from uh, brides and grooms for set meetings up and so forth and so on so I know exactly it, it's 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 amazing but uh I gotta ask you a question on on your your speaker do you have one set of speakers or do you have multiple sets of speakers what for uh sounding what yeah. I do this for sound for sound when you when you go to a gig and you set up. It, dep it, it, it depends. It depends. It it literally depends on what it, it depends on what gig it is. Like if it's like a dance, I'll bring two. If it's like a wedding, I'll bring two or four. If it's like an individual small building, I'll just bring one. So, give me an idea. This Saturday, the wedding, uh, I'm bringing. Why well, I, I have. And I will have there and use. I will have you using five speakers. So I'll have um, my RCFs um, for my mains in the main uh, hall. 
I'll mm -hmm. have in the bar area my two Maui Five Goes. And then for the ceremony, I'll have my KRA line array for mm -hmm. the uh, ceremony. And they're talking 120 to 130 people. So I always look at having, you know, make sure you have you know, really gear, but also having the right size and right equipment for things. But I've seen a lot of DJs that show up to a gig where, you know, a wedding and need multiple setups. So you have one. Set I believe this is the thing. It, it's literally, I literally caught, if you're doing a uh, cocktail hour, just mm -hmm. bring like a small, a, a wireless speaker instead of plugging in that you can hook up on your like laptop or an iPod. Then that's your cocktail hour. Then you have one for ceremony. Well, here now here's the thing. It, why would you hook up to a uh, MP3 player or hook up for, to a Spotify player? Uh, if they if the song if they literally have I already told you the song, I would literally bring my iPod. And have the songs already, already programmed, and then go set up to the next room. Go set up my DJ equipment because back and forth, you right there, and then the other one. So you can set then, up. Then oh. you're not you're not DJing that part. Then you're not doing live music. It's a preset playlist. No, so. no, it's just for the for the 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 wedding. It's literally like the song that the, the interest and. The song that they're coming out to. Once oh yeah, the, out. That, that's we're, we're, that's that's usually at, at uh, the re, at the reception itself. Yeah, that's the what, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is cocktail hour like the wedding I'm having. So again, one set up for the ceremony, which will have my tablet and my ceremony set up. One set up, so it'll be a laptop, two Maui Five Goes, uh, and I still do live DJ. So I'll have you know my one laptop for that. Uh, virtual DJ and I'll do live DJ. So I will hop from but the I won't play the um receptional for the bride. I'll actually leave before the receptional plays, go to where the cocktail hour is at and get ready to play when guests come in. And then Tracy, as well as with we have one of our employees with us this Saturday because we have a lot going on, uplighting and video and stuff like that. Uh so be, there's three of us. They'll be tearing down for the ceremony, bringing that to the van. Uh, and then I'll go to cocktail. When the, Toward the end of cocktail, I'll leave that, come back to the uh, main area, and then they'll tear that down for cocktail and take that into the van. And then I'll always, I'm always ahead, but it's always live playing. There's always someone playing it versus a preset playlist. I'm... I've never been a big fan for preset playlists because of the fact that preset playlists it sometimes feels like cookie cutter. Plus, it seems like an easy way out. Now, again, there's a lot of DJs who do it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just me personally. This is me personally saying, um, I, you know, I, I think that if someone's paying you for cocktail, should be just as much as the dance floor. You should be seeing what people are doing, what people are saying, and if people are head bodying or, you know, not head bodying, but uh, head bobbing. Um, having fun, enjoying themselves. Um, but you know, it's one of the things that people. I, I again, I, I just that's the way I look at it. Um, other than that, anything else you want to go over real quickly? Uh, let's see. Oof. I ain't speaking nothing. I had no. I ain't had nothing to think of today. I was literally <laughs> worrying about the. I literally went to five schools today. I'm literally a motivation speaker as well. Instead of DJing, I'm a motivation speaker. I literally went to five schools today. Talk for um, uh, the motiv motivate teachers, parents, and um students. I was literally spin that positivity. Spin that positivity. That's the best uh, thing to do. That yeah, positivity positive. is good. Yep, positivity is always good. Empower people to be positive. Think positive and move forward. Yeah, that's, that's always a good thing. Yeah, so then I, I literally, if I literally had said a lot of things, it was literally like whew, crazy. Like people took in pictures, understand how it was. This, 
literally, it was like I literally back to back, back to back, back to back. Every five schools, literally, I went to my own school today. Speak to them. Came back at five o'clock. Spoke to the parents that want to learn, that want to listen. Let them listen. That was parents most definitely <laughs> than the kids. Parents understand how I, I did things by parents. I did things by students. I did things by teachers. I the last before school started, I did a teacher thing. After that, I did a student things today, and then after that, I did parents thing that that, that evening. So it was later crazy. It was later. I was on the stage. Well, that sounds good. I was whew, tight. Well, I know you're a busy person. I got stuff to do, so we're gonna end it here. Again, guys, if you have not done so already, he has, uh, t- he has TikTok, he has Instagram, Everything. he has YouTube, he has every social media. Make sure you go and follow this man. Make sure you look at his stuff. Make sure you watch watch his stuff. And again, he has a podcast. Motivation. So over there, podcast. watch that. You know. And again, if you're here watching this live, like and follow us on here on uh, on Twitch. If you're on YouTube, watch this repeat. Then go over on Twitch. Subscribe to on on Twitch. Follow us on Twitch. You'll see the DJ show live. You can ask questions. You can ask questions. I, 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 question. I would ask anything. I would ask anything. If it was already DJing, I'll help you out. I'll let, let you know about DJing. Yeah, I'll let, DJ if thing. you want to learn about a motivation speech, I'll give you a motivation speech. Yeah. I will do anything. I'll take the time out of my time and let it talk to you. Okay, guys. Again, Thank you for tuning in. This is the DJ Round Table. Hopefully you guys enjoy yourselves. Again, I, I can't thank you enough for coming in tonight and spending some time here with us and spending time with everyone else. You, you guys will have a good night. All right. See you.